tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence
to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Jesus, we just invite you in this place. Arise, O oh Lord, arise in the midst of this place.
Heavenly Father, I come, don't have much to offer, Holy One, I'm humbled by all that you've done, even though I walk through the valley, well, I don't have to fear. Call me from my sorrow to sadness. I have what more could I want? Run. 
surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone. I'm no longer a slave to fear as I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear, as I am a child of God. From my mother's womb, you have chosen me. I've been born again to your family. Your blood flows through my veins. 
Whether it's in a whisper, whether it's in a shout, he hears you. He hears your heart. He hears your thoughts. He knows where you are. And he knows that you would be there. He knows what tomorrow holds for you. And he's already making a way. He knows you in the deepest places. He knows all the secrets and all the fears that you hide. He knows every tear that comes from your eye. He hears you and he sees you and he loves you. He longs for you. He waits for you. God, I thank you 
that even in our waiting times, God, where we're waiting for you to move, God, you're waiting on us to be where we need to be. You're bringing us to that place. You're moving things out of the way. And you're gently leading us where we need to be to hear your voice, who we need to become to be filled with your presence. God, you wait for us so that you can fill us up. You wait for us so you can show us the way. As you've always been there, you've always been waiting on our hearts to be in that place. You've longed for our thoughts to be upon you. You've looked at us in our darkest places. And you've smiled when you were able to bless us because we were obedient. God, bring us to that place where we need to be. Bring us to the place that we need to go for revival to happen in our hearts, for revival to happen in our church, for revival to happen in this community. God, bring us to that place. Jesus, thank you that as we humble ourselves before you, God, as we pour out our hearts and our desires and our fears and our love for our Savior, God, that you hear us, that you see us, and that you know us. You know us like no one else. Because you're the one who formed us. You know every, every part of who we are. And we rest in knowing that you are a good father. And you have good things ahead for us. Even when we walk through a desert place, even when we don't see your face, even when we're scared of the mountain in front of us, God, you're there showing us, molding us, refining us, restoring us, healing us. You're there. God, we thank you. We thank you, God, for that place. We thank you, Jesus, for restoration and healing and revival in our hearts and in our minds. God, that we could see you for who you are. Not someone who just does what we need them to do and makes us happy and keeps us safe, but God, for who you are, the creator of the world, the one that we owe everything we are to, the reason why we exist, to bring you glory, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. hearts before you right now, Jesus. Find us in the place we need to be, God, to bring you glory in Jesus' name. We praise you. We thank you, Jesus. You are the God who sees us, and you are the God who hears us, and we praise you in Jesus' name. In the pressing, you are making new wine. In the soil, I now surrender. You are breaking.
the crushing, in the pressing, you are making new wine. In the sore line, and I'll surrender, you are breaking new ground. So I yield to you and to your careful hand. When I trust you, I don't need to understand. So make me a vessel. Make me an offering. Make me whatever you want me to be. God, I came here with nothing. But all you have given me, Jesus, bring new wine out of me. In the crushing, in the pressing, you are making new wine. In the soil, I surrender. You are breaking new ground. You are breaking new ground. So make me a vessel. Make me whatever you want me to be. God, I came here with nothing, but all you have given me. Jesus, bring new wine out of me. Oh, Jesus, bring new wine out of me. Jesus, bring new Where there is new wine, there is new power, there is new freedom, and your kingdom is here. I lay down my old place to carry on new fire today. There is new wine, there is new power, there is new freedom, and your kingdom is here. Lay down. 
God praise right now. God is in control of this church. Amen. I'm not in control. God is. And the Holy Spirit's going to do whatever he wants to do. This morning, I just feel like the Lord is just saying he's, he's had a voice in worship. He's going to have a voice in the preaching of the word. But I, and he's had a voice in prophecy in a word of prophecy, but I just believe that he's saying, hey, I, I've got some more vessels I want to have a voice in this morning. i got some more vessels that I want to speak into and speak out of. So this morning, church, will you allow the Holy Spirit to have a voice in you? Will you allow the Holy Spirit to speak his voice, his word, out of your lips, out of your heart. Church, we've heard some amazing things from the Holy Spirit as we've taken time to get quiet before Him and listen. So this is no different. The Holy Spirit is present. He is here. Maybe you've been standing here all morning and you haven't made yourself aware of his presence in this place. I want to encourage you right now. Make yourself aware because his presence is here. His power is here. His mercy is here. His love is here. His grace is here. His peace is here. Because that's who he is. It all flows out of him. So as we just take a moment this morning. Just to allow our ears and our hearts to hear from Almighty God. To share with this church. To be a vessel that's used by Him. Can we do that this morning? Can we just get quiet before the Lord? And if the Lord lays something on your heart, whether it be a word or a sentence, can He, can he use you today? Can He speak through you? Let's just take this moment right now. Let's give the Holy Spirit a voice.
Father, we just want to thank you this morning. God, we thank you for your vessels. God, vessels that say, God, use me. Just use me, Lord. Just use me, God. I want you to speak through me. God, eager hearts and eager spirits in this place today. God, we give you praise, Father God, for each and every one of them, Lord, that, God, that we have people, God, that are here, Lord, that aren't just spectators in, in a game, Father God, but, Lord, they are contributors in the kingdom, in the church of Almighty God. And, God, we give you praise right now, God, for using so many people this morning. Thank you, God, for them allowing you to have a voice in their lives and in this place. We give you praise right now. Amen. You may be seated for just a moment. It came fast, so she may have missed a few. But man, almighty, God was speaking some powerful stuff, wasn't he? Oh, my God. Okay. Maybe whatever she missed, that's a God. Good deal. We got it. Lean on me, brothers and sisters. My arms are open. You are my child. You are, I'm sorry, you are a child of God. You are loved. Today is a new day. Don't be afraid. Smile. God is with you. Fear no evil. I am with you. Open your hearts and your minds. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Keep your lamps lit. Do not stray away. There is a breaking and a breakthrough. Take my Take my love and spread it. All things are possible with God. Remember, you are a child of God. He will lead or he will heal your wounds and dry your tears. Do not be doubtful. I am the light. Worry no longer. Breakthrough is coming. Of course, you heard the, the first part of that. We couldn't write all that down, Jenny. I'm sorry. Listen to me. I will lead you where you need to go. Share my blessings with everyone. Follow the right path. Church, I'm just going to go ahead and let you know, I'm typing all these up, and you're going to get them at the end of the year. And I want you to be able to read them and hear what the Lord is speaking to this church. Okay, we're not just discarding these and throwing them away after one week. Okay, I'm typing these up, and I'm, I'm keeping them in a document, and I'm going I'm to give them to every single one of you so you can see. Because if you were here, God's speaking to you. If you're a part of this church in any fashion, God's speaking to you. So listen, hear the voice of God, because He wants to tell you something. It's powerful, isn't it? Amen. Thank you so much for being willing vessels, for being surrendered vessels to Him this morning. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. Thank you for the voice of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord God, for hearts that are hungry. God, as we fast, it doesn't just make us hungry for physical food. But God, it makes us hungry for spiritual food. Your word says, Jesus, you said yourself, man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Lord, you have fed us here this morning. You have already fed us, Lord God, and you're not even done yet. So Lord, right now, I pray God as we continue in this service, that our hearts will continue to be receptive, that our ears will continue to be open to the voice of Almighty God, to the voice of the Holy Spirit. We will be attentive and ready to hear and to receive and be changed by your word and transformed by your spirit. God, thank you for the opportunity to continue in worship even now as we take up the offering today. 
God, you have blessed us abundantly. God, you've opened the windows of heaven and you poured out a blessing on which we can't even, we don't even have room for. God, it just keeps coming because of your blessing. But Lord, it really keeps coming, God, because of obedience to your word. God, we have chosen to take your word for what it says and we've chosen to sow and bring the tithe and the offering into the storehouse. And God, because of that, you rebuke the devourer for our sake. Thank you, Lord God, for rebuking the devourer. So Lord, right now, as we sow, Lord God, we thank you right now. We thank you and we praise you. That you're the author of giving. You're the one who demonstrated to us first how to be a giver. So Lord, let us follow your lead in this place today. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Come on, kids. I'm going to ask Barb to speak a prayer of blessing once we all get up here over these kids this morning. Yeah, come on up here, guys. Man, (laughs) we are booming with kids. Don't you just love that? Can everybody grab a hand? Yeah, everybody grab a hand. Just grab a hand. Grab a hand. Everybody grab a hand. Grab a hand. Yeah, there you go. Sydney, you, go. you grab a hand. Sydney, you come right here. Come on, Sydney. Sydney, you come right here. <laughs> Heavenly Father, right now, I just want to give you the glory for the children, Lord. And I just thank you, Jesus, for all the children that we are able to speak and and talk to, Lord, and talk, t- learn about you, Lord. And I just pray, Lord, when they're in, when they're in your classes, Lord, that their ears would be open. And that their eyes would look towards you for guidance and clarity. And I just thank you for the children today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. All right, guys, you guys have a great time. Listen good to Miss Jamie. Well, I praise God today that um, our worship pastor set a new precedence on how long I can preach last week. <laughs> and so, so uh, buckle up. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, baby. <clears throat> All right. You probably never thought we'd get back here, but we're, we're back here. We're back in the book of Romans, and I, I'm excited about that. I, uh, I was praying. I was seeking God. I was like, God, is this what you want us to do? You, got, you want us to go back to Romans, or do you want us to, to do something else? And he said, nope, go back to Romans. I've got some things to say. I said, all right, I'm going to do it. <clears throat> we, took a, we took a little hiatus from, from Romans to discuss our core values and our vision and our mission. Everybody still remember your core values? Yes? Yeah? Okay, they're not up on the screen now. Come on. Yeah. Who can tell me one? 
connect him to God, okay? What did you say, Lindsay? Oh, you said what she said, okay. Serving others, good job, Mackenzie. Okay, another one. Building relationships, yes. Come on now. Following God, thank you. One more. Huh? I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to share God, right? Okay, sharing God. Okay, um, before, if you if you were not at the volunteer banquet, find me before you leave because I've got a mug to give you. It's got our core values on there, and that way you can take them home, and you can drink coffee, and you can look at our core values so you don't forget them, okay? I've got one per family, all right? So come and, come and find me, and I'll make sure you get one. Okay, and of course, our mission and our vision, mission is to love God and love people, and our vision is to be, not just to say it, but to be the church that loves you first. Amen? All right, good. <clears throat> I'm not, I'm not going to let you guys uh, forget these. I'm going to keep on putting them in front of you. I appreciate um, what Zach had to say last week. It was very good. I appreciate you sharing and sharing God's heart for worship. It was, it was excellent. So thank you very much. <clears throat> so today I want, to, I want to take some time as we get started to, because when we get into, we're going to be in Romans chapter 11, in case you didn't, in case you forgot where we were. Hopefully you were just anticip- anticipatingly waiting, you had your bookmark in there this whole time, and you're like, oh sweet, I know exactly where we are in the book of Romans. Yeah. But when we left off in the book of Rome, we discussed the importance of sharing the good news and the obligation to preach the word, right? The obligation to preach the word. We learned that we have a God that is constantly and persistently showing himself to us in generous mercy and grace, right? Is he, has he been generous in mercy and grace to you? Okay, if you don't think so, come talk to me. I will show you how generous he has been, okay? And even if I don't know you, I'll show you how generous he has been. Even if I don't know what's going on in your life, I'll show you how generous he has been. <clears throat> He's generous right now. You've heard me say many times, if you do that, oh, God just gave me another one. Man, God's so good. He is so gracious. I didn't deserve that next breath, but man, he gave me another one, Right? God's grace gives us what we don't deserve. Isn't that good? We would, we would do ourselves well if we exhibited God's grace by giving people what they don't deserve. Okay? What? They don't deserve my love. I don't love them. I, I can't stand them. Really? What'd they do? Oh, you don't even know. You'd be mad too. You'd be mad too. Okay, here's what I'm asking you to do, though. I'm asking you to extend grace. Can you give them grace, even though they don't deserve it? Even, and it's not that they don't deserve it. It's you don't think they deserve it. Right? So can you give them grace in the midst of that? Can you, can you offer that to them this morning? Because God hasn't stopped giving you grace. And I know we mess up all the time. Right? I know we get it wrong. Can you give grace today? What about mercy? God's mercy holds back what we deserve. What? So grace gives us what we don't deserve. Mercy holds back what we do deserve. So grace gives us blessing even though we don't deserve it. Grace gives us life even though we don't deserve it. Grace gives us salvation even though we don't deserve it. Mercy holds back judgment even though we deserve it. Mercy holds back condemnation even though we deserve it. Great mercy holds back death, even though that's what we deserve, right? But because of his mercy, he holds those things back and he gives us, because of his grace, he gives us salvation instead of what we deserve. And it, it just, this, this kind of spoke to me this morning. Actually, I, I typed this morning as I was looking over my notes, I'm like, wow. But something we need to understand about grace is that it becomes irrelevant pre-salvation if we believe that we deserve or can, we can work 
for or obtain his favor on our own merit. It becomes irrelevant, right? If we think we can work for it, we think we can get God's favor by doing enough good things, then grace is irrelevant in your life. We need to understand that great God's grace is, is for me, and it's attainable for me no matter what. No matter what I've done, no matter what I'm doing, God's grace is available to my life. Mercy is not needed if we think that we don't deserve the wrath of God. Amen? Okay, so some of you might be thinking, oh man, you know, I'm a good person, so you know, I don't deserve the wrath of God. Then mercy isn't for you. Because you need to understand that God's held back his wrath because of his wonderful mercy. Amen? Are you thankful for grace and mercy today? We haven't got, gotten into Romans yet, man. You better be thankful. Because it, it's going to get even better. Here we go. First, we're going to start in the end of chapter 10 because I want to bring context again into our scripture. Okay? Because just because a chapter starts or chapter stops in our Bibles, that doesn't mean it stops. Okay? We need to keep reading them in continuity so that we understand that, hey, this is all together. This isn't like, oh, Paul stopped there, so... You know, this is completely different now. It's not like a chapter in a book, like we're, we're going somewhere else. But we're continuing on. <clears throat> Verse 20. And later Isaiah spoke boldly for God, saying, I was found by people who were not looking for me. <clears throat> I showed myself to those who were not asking for me. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. Okay, we got to stop right there for a second. None of, you, none of us were looking for God, none of us were asking for God, but you found God. God found you, right? That, that's pretty astounding, isn't it? So, hmm, you weren't looking, you weren't asking. So did you really do anything? No, God, God did everything, right? Okay, you weren't looking, you weren't asking. God may have put somebody in front of you and said, hey, you need Jesus. But that was God still speaking, right? You weren't looking, you weren't asking, but God has a way of making sure the right people get in front of you. The right message gets into your heart, right? Isn't that awesome? Okay, listen, verse 21. But regarding Israel, God said, all day long I opened my arms to them, but they were disobedient and rebellious. All day long. Think about that. This is, this is how God was all day long with your life. All day long. It's like, hey, Jeff, you going to come? Jeff, I'm still here. Right? Yeah, I'm calling Jeff out this morning. Hmm? Are you going to come? Here I am. Here I am. Hey, my arms are still open. My arms are still open down over here. Okay, I'm, I'm still here. But they, they never stopped. Right? Always. Right here. Arms wide open. His arms still open. Now, we know that the children of Israel, we know that the Jews have also rejected Jesus. They've rejected Jesus, the Messiah. But you know what? Here's the awesome thing about it. Even though they've rejected the son, here he is. Come on. Still here. Come on. Still, I'm still ready for you to run into my arms. I'm still here. See, you may have given up on God, but God will never give up on you. And if you have given up on God, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm hoping that you will change your mind. Because God's got better things for you than giving up on Him. Amen? So, I love what this said because it's like the Gentiles and, and He's talking to Gentiles, He's talking to Jews. And it's like, do you want what they, what they have? Then come on. I offered it to you first. But it's not too late, right? That's what I love about God. It's not too late. If to, today, I, I love what the Bible says, today is the day of salvation. Okay, what does that mean? It means that today is, right? That means we're in today. We're in the present. Today is the day of salvation. Okay, and guess what? When we get tomorrow, today is the day of salvation, right? So every time we look at this, it says today is the day. So today's the day to run into his arms. The day to de- today is the day to, to see the Father's arms open wide for you. 
See, but the problem was is we as Gentiles didn't know that we needed a Savior until it was explained to us that we did. <laughs> right? Okay, we didn't know. It's like, what? What do we need a Savior? We need a Savior. Yeah, you do. You need a Savior. The Jews knew they needed a Savior, but they chose rebellion and disobedience. They rejected the Savior that was sent. So we didn't know we needed a Savior. The Jews knew they needed a Savior, but they rejected the one that God sent. I don't know which one's worse, <laughs> right? But I'm thankful that through revelation, through, through the Holy Spirit, that God reveals to both of us, Jews and Gentiles, that, hey, Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is the one that I sent to save the world. Come to him. My arms are open. Isn't that awesome? But the question is this. I know that we're all asking it, and I know we've asked it before. And I know that you have people in your life that you've asked God about this before. But why, God, would you continue to keep your arms open to a rebellious and stubborn people? Why? Why, God, would you do that? And a lot of times we're looking at other people. Because we probably wouldn't be asking ourselves that question if we were looking at ourselves. <laughs> Because then it'd be like, oh, thank you, God, that you keep your arms open for rebellious and stubborn people. That's so awesome. But instead, we look over here and we're like, God, why do you keep your arms open for rebellious and stubborn people? Because we're looking at people that we, we feel don't deserve it. Oh, but we do. We deserve it. Right? We deserve to have God's open for us, arms open for us all the time. But you know, there are people. No, church. That's not the grace of God. That's not the grace of God. Everybody deserves. Okay, and well, I'm, I'm saying nobody deserves it, but everybody gets to have it. To have it, right? Everybody gets to have it. Access to it. Okay, so why would God keep his arms open to rebellious and stubborn people? And this is where we respond. I don't know, but I'm sure glad he does. Amen? I am sure glad he does. Now let's get into uh, chapter 11, verses 1 through 4. It says, I asked then, has God rejected his own people, the nation of Israel? Of course not. Can I just tell you right now, God doesn't reject people. That's, that's not his MO. Okay? Can we just get that right now? God doesn't reject people. Now, the thing is, is the gate is wide open, right? The arms are wide open. One of these days... He's going to have, it's not that he rejected you, but one of these days, because of your rejection of him, he's not going to be able to allow you into his kingdom, right? So, if you're in rebelliousness or rejection of God, we need to stop, right? We need to stop because our rejection will eventually not cause his rejection, but cause his inability to allow us to come into his kingdom and into heaven. Do you understand that? There is going to come a day. Okay, let's keep reading. Of course not. I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, and a member of the tribe of Benjamin. No, God has not rejected his own people, whom he chose from the very beginning. Do you realize that the scriptures say about this? Elijah the prophet complained to God about the people of Israel and said, Lord, they have killed your prophets and torn down your altars. And I am the only one left. And now they are trying to kill me too. And do you remember God's reply? He said, no. I, I just love that. It's like, no. Okay, God's just like, nope. Sorry. Wrong again. I mean, God lets us. God lets us complain, right? God lets us tell Him what we're feeling, but you got to you got to listen to God now. Okay, what was God's reply? I love that because Elijah he chose to do a little bit of whining, but then he got quiet and he said, "Okay, God, what do you want to say now?" And I think that's sometimes where we get where we miss it. We just like to complain and whine, and then we like to leave and we like to just turn off the turn off the station and say, "Okay, God, I'm done. Sorry, you're not." We need to make sure that we're, st we're continuing to stay, stay in track with what God wants to say. Because here it says, 
Do you remember God's reply? He said, no, I have 7,000 others who have never bowed down to Baal. I have 7,000 people that have never entered into idol worship. 7,000. Now, I know that we can all, we can all get in this position where, where we feel like that, man, I'm the only one serving God. And we can get, especially midweek, right? We haven't been in church. We, maybe we haven't been in church in a couple weeks. And we like, man, I just feel like I'm the only one that's serving God. Or it could even be Mondays. I'm just the only one. And this is exactly where Elijah was. And, and God said, no. And he said, look around. Look around. There's plenty of people that will serve me. Okay, there's plenty of people that I've got, I've got designated, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to save them. So Paul is stating here that God hasn't rejected his people. He's a Jew, and he was saved, right? He's like, hey guys, what do you mean he's rejected the Jews? I'm a Jew. How can that be possible? I'm a Jew, and God saved me, right? God has given every Israelite opportunity to choose Jesus. He has chosen them, right? He has chosen you today. You're not here by accident. Okay, he's chosen you. Now it's your choice whether or not you want to choose him. Do you remember? It was right. It was right after. This is right after Elijah going against the prophets of Baal. Isn't that crazy? How how. Elijah, and I'm sure because he had all of these enemies looking at him, glaring him in the face, right? 400 prophets looking at him that were on the other side of the fence saying, our God's the real God. And here's Elijah just standing there all by himself. Nobody's really said, oh, I'm with Elijah. I'm with Elijah. I'm coming over here. I'm with Elijah. No, Elijah stood there all by himself while all these 400 prophets of Baal cried out in unison to Baal. In which they got no response, by the way. No response whatsoever because Baal is dead. Okay? Baal's dead. And then Elijah, being one man, stood up and said a prayer and boom, God answered. Because why? Because our God lives. Our God's alive. But think about it. It says that after this, Elijah went and he, he killed all the 400 prophets of Baal. He killed them all. And so he went away, though. I'm, I'm thinking, it's like, man, you just stood like that, and then you had, to, you had to do this, and then now you're off by yourself, and it's just like, I mean, it, it can be discouraging sometimes when, you, when you're walking along, and you just left this big old thing, this big miracle of God. Nobody came up to you afterwards and said, man, Elijah, what just happened was amazing. Can I follow you? God, I want what you what you have. Nobody. He what to say? He went off by himself, all by himself. And so here he is. And God's like, "What are you doing, Elijah? What are you doing?" It's like, "Well, God, I'm the only one. I'm the only one that wants to serve you in all Israel." He says. No, that's not true, Elijah. There's 7,000 more people that I need you to minister to, that I need them to hear about me, right? And I wonder if the 7,000 spectators that God was talking about or if there were others. I think about that. God didn't say that there were 7,000 ready to believe in him. He just said that, there were, they, that they weren't following a false or worshiping a false god. Now, it would be one thing to be like, hey, I got 7,000 people lined up that they're ready to believe in me just as soon as you say the word. Nope, he didn't say that. He said, there's 7,000 that haven't bowed their knee. Church, I, I want you to understand that you're not alone in your discouragement at times, right? There are times we get discouraged. There are times when it just feels like you want to pull your hair out and you want to say, am I the only one? <laughs> but we can't be prideful. 
and think that we're really the only ones that serve God. There are others. There are many others. But here's what I, I believe, why I believe God went to Elijah. Because Elijah had stopped doing what he was supposed to be doing. Okay, that's not okay with God. God, once God places a call in your life, once God gives you a mission, which he has, to love God and love people, once he's given you that, you don't get to just sit in your house all the time and never do it. He, I hope, if that is the case, I hope that he's knocking on your door this week, and he's coming on in, and he's saying, hey, Christy, what are you doing? What are you doing here? Well, God, I'm the only one. I'm the only one in all of Lewisburg that's serving you. And man, it's just really discouraging. You know what God's going to say? Nope. <laughs> no, Christy, that's not the case. I have, I have thousands of people here that have not bowed the knee to a false idol. And I need you to go and tell them about me. So church, we're not without hope. Amen? Aren't you thankful for that? Let's read verses 5 through 8. It is the same today for a few people of Israel. For the few people of Israel have remained faithful because of God's grace. Did you hear that? A few people of Israel have remained faithful because of God's grace. You know what, this, this just got me thinking. Actually, I know it's the Holy Spirit because I'm not this smart. But, so it got me thinking about this, and, and the Holy Spirit just began to show me something. Okay, His grace is what saved me, and His grace is what keeps me saved. Amen? And so, here I am over here, you know, if I, if I get all puffed up and I think, man, you know, I do good things. I'm a good person. Man, because God lives in me, look at all this. You know what I've just done? I just put, put the finger on me. Hey, guys, look at this. Look at this. Come on, spotlight right here. Can somebody, can somebody adjust that, please? That's not where God wants the spotlight. Okay, I want you to understand the only reason that you're here today, the only reason that you're walking with Jesus day after day after day is because of his amazing, wonderful, never-ending grace that he has placed in your life. Because I want you to listen to this next part. It says, remain faithful with God's grace, his undeserved kindness in choosing them. His undeserved kindness. So if you are experiencing the kindness of God, you don't deserve it. I don't deserve it. But guess what? He's still extending it to you anyway. He's still giving it to you anyway. <clears throat> and since it is through God's kindness, then it is not by their good works. For in that case, God's grace would not be what it really is. Free and undeserved. Now, Here's what I don't want us to get to. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop right there for a second. Sometimes when something's free, we treat it like it's free. Amen? We treat it cheap. We treat it like it's a cheap thing. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna I want you to understand something. Just because grace is free to us, it wasn't cheap. All right, so, so we need to understand this morning that you don't treat the grace of God like some cheap piece of junk. You know, how, you, know you can get that way. Oh, I didn't pay much for that, so I don't really care. Ooh, not the grace of God, y'all. Come on. Okay, I, I'm telling you, if you, when the grace of God came and you recognized the grace of God for your life, you should have said, yes. Okay, I don't deserve this kindness, but because of this kindness, I'm giving my whole life to this. Right? So it should have cost you your whole life, even though that's not what God requires. Does that, does that make sense? His grace is undeserved kindness. He didn't say you have to do something in order to receive it, but I'm going to give it to you anyway. I mean, it's some, sometimes it's just... Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. 
good. No? Okay, yes and no. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll talk on Wednesday. <laughs> okay, let's, let's read on to the next verse, and I've got some other things that here that the Lord is, wants to say. So, so this is the situation. Most of the people of Israel have not found the favor of God they are looking for so earnestly. A few have, the ones God has chosen, but the hearts of the rest were hardened. As the scriptures say, God has put them into a deep sleep. To this day he has shut their eyes so they do not see and closed their ears so they do not hear. So just as I mentioned, the children of Israel aren't without hope. Just as lost people around us, just as lost people around us are not without hope. Right? Okay, do you understand that? You know those people that you've looked at and you said, man, they need Jesus. I'm not going to tell them about him, but man, they need Jesus. Okay, because they're not without hope. Church. They're not without hope. We got to stop looking at people like they don't they don't have access to hope like we do. Amen. Because the grace of God is readily available to them just like it is to us. Because of God's undeserved kindness or the grace of God at any moment, at any moment, at any moment, okay? I want you to understand, it doesn't matter what that person's life looks like right now in this moment. At any moment, for anyone and everyone, they can respond to God's sacrifice and have the same righteousness as we do. With no prerequisites. Wow. Wow. Because I can tell you right now, after being saved for 21 years, there are times where I think they can't. Now, I don't think that for very long, because the Holy Spirit says, what? What are you talking about? Of course they can. I've told you many times, in my testimony of knowing Jesus, one day, I was smoking weed, I was doing drugs, I was... I was drinking alcohol, I was doing all this stuff, being sexually promiscuous. And the next day, guess what? The grace of God became revealed to me. And that undeserved kindness that I did nothing to obtain came upon me and I was changed forever. But I guarantee you there were Christians looking at me saying, that dude has got a long ways to come. Now when the grace of God gets a hold of you, When the grace of God gets a hold of you, you can change anybody in the twinkling of an eye. But church, I want you to hear what happens when we continue to reject the free gift that God has extended to us. Because what happens is our hearts become slowly, slowly, slowly hardened to what God wants to do in our lives. It's a slow fade. Okay, I don't know if you ever heard that song, but man, it's a powerful song. It's a slow fade. It doesn't just happen overnight, right? But slowly, we just continue one, t- one rejection at a time until finally our heart is stone again. And I'm telling you, this can happen to a believer, right? Where we just reject, 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 reject. We, we reject the grace of God, right? We don't want to reject the grace of God even after we've gotten saved because we still need it every day. And it's the grace of God that continues to to help us to grow and get stronger in Him. So the rejection has caused their eyes. You know, I I know a lot of it says that God has put them into a deep sleep, but when you reject God, this is what happens. It's just, it's like the response of or the reaction of rejecting God. You're put into a deep sleep. You you get a hardened heart. It's what happens. That's, That's the reaction of it. You know, it's like cause and effect. So the Jews, again, here's God, right? Here's God. The Jews are like, okay, 
cross, arms crossed, back to God, don't want anything to eat. They just keep rejecting him. Just keep rejecting him. So in God's wonderful mercy and grace, you know what he did? Because the Jews reject him, he said, I've got some people. I know some people. He looked at us, right? People that aren't Jews, they're called Gentiles. He looked at us and said, I know some people that could use my grace. And you know what he said? I'm going to extend it to them. They're going to reject it. I'm going to give it to them. Acts chapter 13, verse 46, it says, Then Paul and Barnabas spoke out boldly and declared, It was necessary that we first preach the word of God to you Jews. But since you have rejected it and judged yourselves unworthy of eternal life. Wow. Did you hear that? When we reject the grace of God, we are basically judging ourselves as unworthy of eternal life. Isn't that, man, that's powerful. <clears throat> we will offer it to the Gentiles. For the Lord gave us this command when he said, I have made you a light to the Gentiles to bring salvation to the farthest corners of the earth. Now, that's the, that's the awesome thing about God. God's still like this. But we reject him. He's like, okay, you want to reject me? I'm still, I'm still, I'm just going to open it to everybody. And I'm, anybody that wants to come. Okay, you may reject me and you may think that the person next to you is, is not worthy, but I'm standing here with open arms. They want to come to me. I'm going to go and open it up to them. And I'm going to let them come and receive my grace. I'm going to let them live under my grace now. Wow. Because we all know that the Jews hated the Gentiles. <laughs> right? They couldn't stand them. They thought they were unclean. They didn't deserve grace. I hope that we aren't looking at anybody like that because that would be completely and utterly wrong. Because I didn't deserve grace. You don't deserve grace. They don't deserve grace, but God still wants to give it to them. You know, I, I just really sense in my spirit that this is the way God wants to to conclude this service. I've got more scriptures, but I just really feel like this is where I'm supposed to stop. If you'll stand with me this morning. Vinny, will you come up here and join me right here, please, sir? Yeah, just right here. It'd be fine. I need a... Uh, um, Crystal, would you come up here, please? You guys just put your arms out for me guys if you guys start to see their arms getting heavy with a couple people really seriously get on both sides of them and help hold their arms up if you start to see them start dropping so i don't know what zach's got prepared or what he's going to sing but i just really sense in my spirit that man there are some people that have rejected the grace of god and i need you to see a visual this morning of what God looks like for you. This is what he looks like for you. And I want Denny and Aaron just to be representatives of the Father right now. Just representatives. Standing here with open arms. Saying, hey, my grace, my grace is available to you. You may have rejected, you may have rejected me yesterday. My arms are still open. My arms are still open to you. So as Zach begins to sing this song, this is an opportunity. Becca, would you come up and stand, stand, stand over here for me? This is an opportunity. Same thing. Spread your arms out, please. This is an opportunity for you to come and run into the arms of the Father. And th again, this is a, a physical thing, but guys, this has spiritual impact, right? This has spiritual impact that as we, as we look at these as representatives of the Father with arms wide open. I want you to think about what you did yesterday. Man, I want you to think about the last thing you did that wasn't pleasing to God. I want you to think about the last time that you rejected Him. And then, once you think about that, 
I want you to think about the grace of God that says my arms are wide open for you. And I want you to run into the arms of one of these people. Just let them, just embrace them. Because this is like running to God. You're saying, you know what? I have been rejecting him. I have been doing my own thing. And today, today I'm running. I'm running into the arms of the Father. So come. Come and run into the arms of the Father right now as, as Zach sings this song. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, our redemption, our salvation is in his blood. Jesus, light of heaven, when forever his kingdom come. Don't let your heart be tumbled. Hold your head up high. Don't fear no evil. Fix your eyes on this one truth. God is madly in love with you. Take courage, hold on, be strong. Remember where your help comes from. Oh, 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 the walls come down all creation everything with breath repeat the sound all his children clean hands pure hearts good grace good God his name is Jesus swing wide all you have Good grace, good God. His 
name is Jesus. Sing Jesus. Jesus. Our redemption. Our salvation is in his blood. Jesus. Out of heaven. Praise forever. His kingdom come. Stand up here this morning. Maybe you need to take a picture to remind you this week. As you go through this week, his, his arms are open. Can I tell you, there's been times where the enemy has tried to convince me, hey, you can't go back. The rejection was too much this time, man. And I listened, and my heart became more hardened. Church, we got to stop listening to the wrong voice. We got to start listening to the, the voice of the Father when He says, My grace is sufficient, my grace is here for you. Okay, I understand you're not perfect, that's why you need my grace. The Father's arms are open for you all week long, all month long, all life long. Don't ever think that he has closed his arms to you. If you feel rejected, you're the one who's rejected him. He's never rejected you. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning. Thank you for the unending, amazing grace of the wide open arms of the Father. Lord, I think about the prodigal this morning. When he got away and began to do his own thing for a little while, you pricked his heart to go back home. And it says when he was a ways off, when he had done nothing to deserve anything. Matter of fact, he did everything to not deserve anything. But it says when the father saw him a ways off, he ran to him. And he embraced him. And he said, my son was dead, but he's alive again. Church, you may have come in here feeling dead today, but if you ran into the arms of the Father, whether literally or spiritually, I'm going to tell you something. You're not dead. You're alive. The Father has declared you to be alive today. So rest in that. Remain in His grace. Don't, don't treat His grace as cheap but treat it with the value that it truly is the blood of Jesus Christ God paid a high price for that for that grace it was by his only begotten son that he gave it to us so let us rejoice in that grace always in Jesus name God bless y'all. I love you. Thank you for being in the house of the Lord today.